It is important for us to understand that Christianity is a spiritual thing. Come to Jesus. Come, my friend. Come, my brother. One day, I will see his face. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this evening and for your great and powerful help to build your church in Jesus name Amen. Amen Mark chapter 6 verse 1 and he went out from thence and he came into his own country and his disciples followed him and when the Sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence has this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that it, such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Amen. Amen. And then it goes on in verse 3. It says, is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary. The brother of James and Joseph. All right. And are these not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin. And he could there do no great work, mighty work, save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and he healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Now, each of the writers of the gospel gives a little different perspective to each story. This same story found in Luke chapter 4 uh, gives you a little variation and helps you to understand what actually happened. In Luke chapter 4 verse 28, you see it says, are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. All right. It says, and they all in the synagogue, when they, Luke 4, 28, when they had these things, okay, were filled with wrath and rose up, amen, and thrust him out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. Amen. Amen. So you see here that Jesus' encounter in the synagogue in his own country, right, uh, in Nazareth where he was brought up, led to the people being so angry with him that they wanted to kill him. All right. Now this again is the same feeling that you have throughout the Bible where you see the story of Jesus that, that there were devils which were in the world and they had been there for a long time and that the presence of Jesus was undesirable. His presence was not wanted and so they wanted to execute him. They wanted to kill him. Okay? Now I want you to know that this is the aim of the devil as long as you live for God and as long as you are not deceived by the devil. Now, the devil's success is based on lies. It's based on something that is not true. He can only succeed to destroy you if he can get you to accept, think, and believe in things that are not true. That is why the Bible teaches us, are you there? About the seven spirits of God. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, 
That's for the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord himself. That's seven. All right. In Isaiah 11 and verse 2, you have these spirits mentioned. Now, each of these, or most of these things about the Holy Spirit, are to do with how you think and how you how you process ideas Amen. all right so depending on how anointed you are you think in a particular way yeah. depending on how anointed and depending on how deceived you are you think in another way so when the holy spirit is on you all right you have the spirit of wisdom spirit of understand wisdom that means you know what what is you got seven things seven ways you can go and wisdom tells you all right that if a bird stays on a tree for too long a stone will be thrown at it so you decide to fly away do you understand what i'm saying uh -huh. so it's like should i stay on the branch should i fly off the branch should i do this should i not do the different things but wisdom tells you look when you stay too long on this branch a stone will be thrown at you are you understanding what i'm saying yeah so these are just that's wisdom that understanding which is that gives you the explains why things are happening the way they are happening most of us do things but we don't understand why they have example we watch television use mobile phones we work with tigo mtn uh we te text numbers here and there we win prizes do different we don't understand how it works but we just use it anyway most people are working with God. We don't understand why God does the things he does. How he's doing it. Why, why, why. We don't really understand. So that's the understanding. Counsel. Counsel is what you say. What you speak. You know. Some of you don't realize that just for one thing you say, your boss likes you. And another thing you say, he doesn't like you. I remember one, one person. I, the Lord. Uh, I, I, I don't know the Lord. But I felt that we should give him a donation of a certain amount of money. You know, he was speaking in a way, and then I just felt, oh, I, I, I was touched by this guy, and I wanted to give him uh, an amount of money. Then, as he continued to talk, you know, then I changed my mind again. I said, no, I don't want to give this money to this guy anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the spirit of counsel, you know, was not there. And then later on, he was talking again, and I felt some more compassion for him, and I let me, let's give this money to him. And then again, he cancelled it by saying something else. So, the spirit of cancer helps you to say things because people sort of understand you or relate with you based on what you say. That's the spirit of counsel. All right. Then we have this. So all these have to do with your mind. Before the only one is the spirit of might, strength. That is, you know, like when you do something, there seems to be some kind of force that makes it work or makes it break through or makes it pass through the difficulties and succeed. You know, the spirit of might. And then you have the spirit of knowledge. Spirit of knowledge is very important. You know, for instance, if you had known certain things, you know, you wouldn't have done certain things. If you had known certain things when you were younger, you wouldn't have done this. If you had known this, you wouldn't have done that. If you had known you were marrying a witch, you wouldn't have married a witch. If you had known you were marrying this, you wouldn't have done that. So it's like knowledge is very important. Just to know, just to have knowledge. And it's one of the spirits I've been praying for very much these days the spirit of knowledge because if you know you know certain things if you had known if i had known years ago when i was in school if i had the knowledge of building the knowledge of the importance of building a house or buying land i would have bought land at the expensive parts of Accra, which are of no importance which were of no importance then but have become so expensive today you know but you don't have that knowledge so you don't do it you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, just knowing. I remember one brother who went and married a beautiful person. And if he had known what he was marrying, he wouldn't have married. He wouldn't have married her. One touch. All right. So, brothers and sisters, the spirit of knowledge. Then you come to the next spirit. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Ah! It is important to fear God. Some people have wisdom, knowledge, this, money, this, but they don't fear God. You know, they don't have a respect, a, a healthy respect and fear for God and the things of God. I thank God for my father-in-law. You know, 
he's a wealthy man he's a blessed person he's an old person i mean he's he's, he's, he's very old and yet he has such a fear for god in spite of his success in life in business in life and in everything that he has done you know god has blessed him but there is such a fear of god in the person you know apart from everything else that he fears he fears god and a lot of people don't fear god and that is a very unfortunate thing amen, amen. are you listening to me are you listening to me wonderful so then you have the spirit of the lord himself so all these you realize it has a lot to do with how you think and so on i don't know how i got into all that but the point that i want you to understand is the devil can succeed with you if he can lie to you and you can believe the things are you with me all right and so jesus was not someone who was who believed the lies jesus 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 did not believe any of the lies of the devil are you listening to me so if you turn with me to um luke chapter 4 or matthew chapter 4 you can turn to any of the any of the ones that you want to to turn to choose you this day who you prefer which one do you prefer matthew good and that's one it's when jesus was led up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward hungered right and it's only when you are in a certain state that you can really be tempted and when the tempter came and he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread amen, amen. but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone amen. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god yes. amen. amen well i want you to understand my dear friends that you know the devil often makes us think we can't live without certain things if i don't have this i can't live life is not life is not worth living if i don't have a husband i can't live if i don't have a child i can't live if i'm not free of this sickness i can't live if i don't have a house here i can't live if i don't have this car i can't live if i don't have this money i can't live and it's very strong most people are deceived by this if i don't go to america i can't live america if i don't go to england i can't live if i don't get a visa i can't live if she doesn't say she will marry me i can't live if he doesn't say he will marry me i can't live if he doesn't come back to me i can't live if you don't have bread you can't live but jesus came up with a very important revelation that we can live life and it, it, you can live life without bread you can survive without bread because it's not only bread that makes our life possible and that makes it possible for us to live it is not only bread it's not only bread it's not only a husband that we live by. a lot of people have husbands and they are not happy it's not only child that makes you happy it's not only dollar that makes you happy. a lot of people are in america they are not happy so jesus came up and he said look it is not only this particular thing you are trying to pressure my, pressurize me into it's not the only thing by which we are living but you see most people are deceived and are given a certain target and goal for life you must get this thing you can't be without it hey and they are pressing like dogs in a dog race my father used to go to dog races and he took me to dog races 
once when I was in London with him. He used to go horse to horse races, dog races. But the dog race was amazing in the evening. You see, it's like a stadium. Everybody sitting around. And there the dogs will come out. But before the dogs come out, a rabbit, a target, a vision, a goal will come out first. And it will come out. Room. And then the dog cages are open. And all the dogs, 10 of them, 15 of them, will chase that vision, which is not a real vision. A rabbit which is not real. A rabbit which has no meat on it. A rabbit which can never be caught. Hey! But if one of the dogs was wise, when he came out, he said, No, man shall not live by this rabbit alone. It's not, I don't need this particular rabbit. I don't need this particular rabbit to live. I'm not following this thing. Ah! I don't need this particular rabbit. If they would, they would have just come out and just relaxed. There will be no race. But the devil has told people, you need this particular. You need this particular man to be happy. You need this particular woman to be happy. You need a, this particular child to be happy. You need this particular car to be happy. You don't need any particular thing. No, 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 no. As soon as you are fixed, you need to live in Ghana to be happy. You need to live in America to be happy. But the day you can say, you know, devil, I don't need, it's not only bread. This particular bread thing you are talking about is not the only thing that I need in this world. There are so many other things by which I can be happy with, even if I don't have that. That is what releases us to serve God. Because that's what released me to serve God. I, I knew I, did, I don't have to go to America to, to live. America was in front. I don't need America. I don't have to be in America. So immediately I was free from something that was going to guide me. I don't have to go to England to live. Life is not only people who are in England who are happy. I don't have to be a doctor to be happy. It's not only those who are... I, man can live without being a doctor. It's not only doctor, it's not only medicine that can make me eat bread. I was set free immediately. My life was open before me. So many things. My children don't have to go to Lincoln School for me to be happy. It's not the only school. I didn't go to Lincoln School. My children don't have to go to uh, so and so international school. It's not the only part. You see, the devil wants that this particular thing is particularly necessary. I don't have to have shoes that is made in whatever. I don't, I don't need that. That particular shoe is not the only thing that I use in my... I also use trousers. So if there are no shoes and I have trousers or shirts, it's okay. Yeah. I can move without that particular shoe. Yeah. Not only. It's not the only thing. And if my father in heaven has chosen not to give me this bread today, then I think I trust my father which is in heaven. That he has decided that this particular thing, he's not going to give it to me now. I'm okay. And immediately your life is free before you. But as soon as you buy that thing, you are following the devil. Yeah. I don't need it. I don't need this particular thing that you are trying to press me. That I need this. That I, if I have a house, it has to be at that particular area. And if I have a house, it has to have this. It must be that. I must be here. I must be there. That's, that's why we can't be missionaries. Because we have to be here or there. Or there. Or particular place which we have been told and zeroed in that this is where you must be. Life. Man shall not live. My life will not only depend on this. Then he went on. Then he said, he took him to a high mountain and set him on a pinnacle. And he said, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge. Then he said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. 
the next thing that the devil would like to deceive uh, once again which jesus was not deceived that's why he was hated because this is the beginning of his ministry he didn't buy any of these things was that he needed to do something supernatural do you see that would that that was done because he was the son of god that sort of showed that he was the son of god that there was power now ladies and gentlemen all the time in our lives we constantly feel the pressure to have some kind of supernatural confirmation of God's presence with us. You see, if you are the son of God and you, you jump down now, you get it? There will be angels because you are the son of God. You get it? So do this to invoke that sign of God being with you. Because you know that your father, he will send angels to catch you. Throughout the time of Jesus, they kept asking him for a sign. It's the same thing. Do something that is senseless, senseless, except that it proves God is with you. Hey, my friend, let me tell you something you may not know. That if you are going to wait for God to prove that he is with you, you understand? You cannot serve God. Yes, you cannot go far. If you are going to wait for some kind of proof about God's presence being with you, that he is really with you supernaturally because of this that has happened, you can see that God is with you, then you are never going to serve God well. Because I can tell you something, that many of the signs which you, are, you wish God would give to you to show you that he's with you, he would never give them to you. Hey! God should do this so that you know that yes, you are called. Be there. Be there. Be there without those things. And wait. Because the devil will constantly be demanding from you a sign. You know, it's the same temptation that I've been, I've been wanting Jesus to appear to me. What other sign do I want him to show me that he is with me? That is that same human temptation you want something to confirm because it's that when you jump off a cliff it's not accomplishing it's just showing power when you jump jump off you give his angels that you fly with angels and you come and land there's nothing to it that let not healing or anything. it's just to show hey how many times i have wanted god to show me his power that proved to me that he is with me and i've waited for years up to now i'm still not seeing those particular signs one of them is that he should appear to me in my room but you know this morning when i was preaching about hell and at the point when i was preaching i was you know i could feel the anointing and the strength of what i was talking about and i thought to myself that hey so if i have seen hell before how would i preach like because i have not seen it before but I preach as if I've been there and I have come yeah. from the place. As if I, I'm, I'm so sure about it. <laughs> so how would it be like if I go and come? What would the preaching be like? <laughs> hey! You see, the Bible says an evil generation is sick for signs. I tell you, wicked people very bad people they are the ones who look for signs and proofs proofs what other proof do you want to show whether i'm a man of god or not to myself or to you and we want something if it's that what you are waiting for to to join a church then <laughs> sometimes god would even give it to you one man he just prophesied to somebody saying your house there is a chest of drawers brown it's in your bedroom by your bed there are eight drawers the second drawer inside there is a particular brooch a watch 
diamonds this this that and your mother gave it to you before she died is it true it is true god says you should give it to me okay. it's a sign is it not what you are waiting for were well, you not waiting for a sign now you have your sign what do you want again Let me, let me assure, Jesus said, there is nothing else I need to show that God loves me, that God is with me. There's nothing, I, I, don't, I don't need to show anything. I don't, there's nothing else that is needed. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I need not, there's nothing else I need to do that will prove more that I'm the son of God or that God loves me or that God is there's no other sign apart from the signs that you have and you see when you are an evil generation Jesus said an evil generation seeketh for a sign and a sign will be given to them hey. but when you seek for a sign you are like a snake swallowing eggs have I told you that story before a certain man had snakes in the house and the snakes is one of the stories i tell my children the snake was every evening to come and swallow eggs and it would bite the eggs and swallow them so the man wanted to kill the snake so one day and he was trying to show that greed is not good he brought the eggs and he added a white stone that was in the shape of an egg and the greedy snake came in the night swallowed the first one and said ah the man has made a mistake has left more eggs one he swallowed it it went two swallowed it three then he swallowed the stone the big stone not knowing that it was not an egg he thought that it would it would melt in his stomach and when he swallowed the egg uh, 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 and then the snake died. <laughs> that is the end of the story. <laughs> so you see, when you are looking for the thing too much, it will be given to you, but what may be given to you, you may not be happy with what is given to you. <laughs> are you there? So, don't worry. There is no further sign that is needed to prove that you are called. There is no further sign for you to know that you are connected to me in the spirit. There is no further sign for you, for me to know. You know, I tell you, so I look at it and say, ah, am I called? Because so the devil can tell. I've heard him so many times. He will tell me, what you are doing is not anointing. No. It's not anointing. I'll see miracles. This is not a miracle. I'll see the crowd say, no, this is nothing. Every time, minimizing everything I'm doing with God and telling me that I need some other sign to prove, I should have to do something that will prove it that it's true. Huh. You don't need anything else to prove that you are called. There's nothing else you need to show that God is with you. What are you looking for now? You want to eat a stone, a white stone? It shall be given unto thee. A painful sign was given unto them. And they crucified the son of God. And after three days he rose from the dead. Don't struggle too much. God is with you already. There is enough sign. The fact that you are breathing in, out, in, out. He's with you. Look around carefully. When Jesus raised the dead, he passed out. There was still, they were asking, what sign do you show? What again? What again? Every blind eyes are open. Miracles are happening. This is happening still. They say, show us a sign. Because that same voice that met him in the garden, in the wilderness, is the same voice that met him out there. Always challenging him. Questioning him. Telling him he's not really real. You are a liar. And by the way, you know where Jesus was in the wilderness? There was nobody with him. I realize that you know when you are really falling into sin there's nobody there yeah some of you you always think of falling into sin when when somebody is there or with somebody or to somebody 
but the real place that you fall my friend you are all alone it is in your heart it is in your heart and in your mind where nobody sees except god sees that is where you fall And then the devil taketh him again into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things I will give thee hey, if thou will fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. All these things I will give thee is another strong voice you have cars and houses when you go and do this job all these things i'll give you you have all these all these things that you have seen i'll give them to you when you go and do this business that is why earlier in my life god introduced me to business so that i'll do some business and see when you export yam you will see something <laughs> when you do a taxi you will see something when you do a hiring car <laughs> you also see something but you have to do it because there's a deception in it that in this there is gold all these things and the condition is that you should serve the devil in whichever format he comes i tell you that you will, in other words that you will not serve god God, Jesus as a Jesus as I said, thou shalt serve only the Lord thy God. Only, only God. But those things are waved before us. You have this car. You will live in America. See America. I don't know why. Every time I land in America or Switzerland, especially America, when I land and I see all the things, it's like a joke to me. What are all these lights? All these colors. <laughs> so many colors so many lights so many fancy cars and i said to my i said to the pe- people and they you know one of my pastors was that every time you come here that's the first thing you say that i don't like this place i'm not impressed with this place these are the things that satan waves in front of people they come and sweat their life until they have heart disease and other sickness and then they go back home and go back home to go and die I tell you, he waves it. Say, you can have all this. That's why sometimes God gives us some bad experiences so that we know that this thing, eh, it is not true. Sometimes the devil will show you a man with khakis. When he comes with a khaki, say, all this, all this, all this, young lady, all this. Woo! all this you see that man that handsome man all this you see the car you see the house at the posh areas beverly hills all this (laughs) all this shall be yours all you have to do is to marry him even though it means you can't serve god all this shall be yours even though it means you can't be in full-time ministry all this <laughs> you see that beautiful lady she's yours even though she even though when you marry her your ministry cannot work but lord she has these beautiful breasts Man shall not live by only breast. It's not only breast that makes you happy. <laughs> it's not the only thing that you need to make you happy in your marriage. It's not the only thing. There are other things. <laughs>
You can have it. You like? You like nice car? America? Visa? Green card? And I know it means you won't serve him. That's what it means for you. You know it. And you take it. And it means, you see, that's what I said. Jesus passed all these tests and came out. When, when they saw him, they, I mean, they, they didn't like him at all because he was not deceived by any of the things that deceive us. We are all, de- I am deceived by this. I have been deceived. You have also been deceived. Over and over again. Think about it. How many things have we not thought, I can't live without this? I can't live. And Jesus said, Man shall live. <laughs> Man shall live. Without it, it's not the only thing that is needed for for living of this life. How many things we have taught? We can't live without this, without that. How many things have been waved at us, and we have been shown this way, this way, please. <laughs> and the angel is see, the devil is the devil is like an angel when he's speaking. It's angelic. It's, it's, it's charming. It's enchanting. It's so winsome. Oh. But everything in the world is based on that. It can't work unless there's a lie. That's working. Yeah. That is why the advert of, the, of, of something that kills so many people. It's, 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 it's done with smiling people. <laughs> Not the, even the blue ones. Other ones. Killers. Smooth. Huh? What else do they say? Smooth. They want? But thank God. Thank God for Jesus. You know, the devil hates you the more you are not deceived. He can see that you have not been fooled. The thing hasn't fooled you. Yeah. And every time I, I, I see the riches of the world, the nations of the world, you know, Bible says, Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles. He's not enticed by these things because he has seen all of them. This is nothing. But I remember in my own life when I would see things and I said, I want it. And I want it to be mine. I want it to be mine. How many have felt that way before? I want one myself. I want my own. I can't live without it. I want it. I, I want to own it. Oh. I remember one time I walked into a house. Immediately I felt something. I want it. I want it. I always remember that because I I remember feeling that thing. I want it. I want it. And immediately somebody said, there's something wrong. Why do you want it? Why do you want to have it? You know, there's a mind that you can't live if you don't have this. And once the devil knows you've got that, then he says, look, I know what you want. Have all this kingdom. And Jesus said, you know what? I'll get it. But not this way. This, I don't have to go this way. Yeah. Jesus was just like us. Most of the time, he didn't have what he needed. When they were harassing him for tax, he turned to Peter and said, Peter, look, let's get something so we can pay for you and for me. When Bishop Saki went to uh, Israel, they gave him St. Peter's fish. 
I think they fr did they fry it for them or they gave St. Peter's fish? Did, did they fry it? Is it the one that caught the money? Or the one that he, he they fished out of the water? Yeah. <laughs> and another time, you know, he had thousands of people that he had to minister to. He had to give them food and he didn't have much money. Wow. He, didn't wow. have, he didn't have, he didn't have what, he, what he needed. He didn't have he was looking, he said, how can I do all this great work that I feel in my heart God is calling me and I don't have much money. You see, man shall not live by money alone. Yeah, and, and I've seen it. It's not only money that makes a person rich. In fact, the Bible says by wisdom a house is built. I have seen God giving me more money through wisdom than cash. Oh yes. So he asked Philip, 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 how are we going to feed all these people? We don't have much. Philip said, how can you think about doing this work? How can you think about this when you yourself know what, how limited we are? And he said, let the people sit down. In other words, get ready to receive. Arrange yourselves in 50s. Get ready. Arrange yourself. Let calm down. You see, sometimes when you are, the entropy is too much, you cannot receive. You know, I said, just calm down, settle down. Too giddy giddy, you can't even receive. Just calm down. Sometimes God is just in the process of calming you down, arranging you. And then he took the little that he had. My friend, the little that you have, huh, is enough to accomplish whatever the will of God is. I am a pastor, I know what I'm saying. I'm building so many churches. We are building so many churches. We need so much money. Crusades, this and that. Sometimes I look at it and I say, what? but you see, that is what God has shown me that you don't do the work of God with money. Yeah. That is what has set me free from rich people. Yeah. I don't have to lick their bottoms. Do you understand when I say lick the bottoms? Yeah. It means do what they want. Do what they say. You know, say nice things to them. Suck up to them. I don't have to because man shall not live by that is not the only thing that we use to do the ministry bless it Lord bless it Lord and when he blessed it it was enough it shall be enough for you I said it shall be enough for you sit down one day I was talking to a pastor he was talking about his members he said my people are very poor and I rebuke him for about 30 minutes I said, look, that is the people that God has given to you. My people are also poor. He said, oh, they are very poor people. These poor people, these poor people. I said, look, we don't talk like that. And you don't have to think of the people like that. These are what God has given us. Don't downgrade it. Don't make it into a zero. It's enough for whatever God wants to do. It's okay. Whatever he wants to do, He's going to bless us and it's going to be enough. And I prophesy to you tonight. I don't know what the will of God is for your life. I don't know what the will of God is for your future. But I can say one thing. It's enough. Amen. God will make it enough for what he has called you to do. And what his intention and his will is for your life. He will make it enough. 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 You don't have to bow to the devil. To get all the things in the world. You don't have to sleep with that man in order to get shoes and dresses. You don't have to give up your life and your calling in order to get things in this world. Just trust God like Jesus. Listen, sit down. Jesus turned away from the devil when he offered him all the kingdoms of this world. And he found himself with five loaves and two fishes of a small boy. He would have had everything in the world. But he would have been owned by the devil. So sometimes when you turn away from what the devil offers, you find yourself with nothing. But I came to tell you, don't worry. Don't worry. When I turned away from medicine and all the glitterati of the world, and I turned to the will of God for my life. And again, when I say the will of God, I hear the voice of the devil say, are you sure it's the will of God? You see that thing, that was the sign. What's the sign? We are still waiting for a sign that you are from God or God is with you. Mercy. Hey. 
You see, deception is very strong. In, even angels who are with the presence of God and in the presence of God could be deceived. It's a very strong thing. You know, sometimes when you turn away from the devil's offer, you find yourself with nothing. Here, yeah, Jesus had nothing. This is John chapter 6. He was with, he had nothing to feed and to do his work. A God will bless the little that you have. And you'll find out that it turns out to be okay. I didn't have much. I didn't know many people, anybody. But the Lord has taken care of us. Brought us on a long journey. And I can still hear these three voices. The first one is saying, you can't live without this. And I have to keep saying, I can live without that thing. I said, the first voice is saying, you can't survive without this particular thing. And I keep saying, I can live without it. I tell you. And the second one is saying what? What's the sign? What's the sign that? The power sign? I've heard it. It's one of the commonest voices. Even the first wedding I was going to officiate. The mother of the bride asked the question, is he powerful? Your pastor, is he powerful? This question has never gone away. <coughs> Give us a sign. Give us a sign of your power. I've heard it over and over. The signs of, you are an administrator, shut up. You are a, you are a, 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 a teacher. You don't have miracles. What's the sign? You're not an apostle. You have not seen Jesus. All oh, this is not anointing. Over and over, the dead will be raised. I'll see cripples come out of which and be wondering, what is this? Is it not, oh, these are not miracles. <laughs> hey. And I kept hearing the voice saying, I'll give you all this. If only you change your message. I've let so many rich people come into your church and you have all the money. If you stop talking and screaming like a madman, can't you see that you are like a lunatic in a church? Why don't you want to be a bit dignified by like these nice dignified pastors in town who are so classically oriented and they at appeal? How come you are not on anybody's board of directors? Because nobody thinks you have any sense about you. You're just screaming about hell and heaven all the time. Why are you not invited? Hey, Oko! Why are you not invited? Why don't the government invite you to advise them? They, you see, you're, so, you're a crazy guy. Crazy man. Hey! Bow. And I say, you know something? I will not change what I'm preaching on. Hey! If you thought that I was, if you thought that I was crazy, you are now going to see madness properly. Hey! This morning when I was preaching, I thought to myself, so uh, you cry, if you have seen hell before, how would you preach? Because I can feel the anointing and the conviction. That's that's you know, many years ago. I went to uh, Legon. We had a camp meeting. And the, the, the camp meeting was called, uh, I don't know what it was called, but I preached about 55 reasons why you should be a soul winner. Yeah, 55 reasons. That was about 10 years ago or more. In Commonwealth Hall. And that, on that time, we launched the East Gospel Crusade tracks. And so, more than 10, it must be more than 10 years ago. Oh? 97, yeah. 11 years ago. The devil wants me to be quiet. This time when I went to South Africa, I preached 116 reasons why you should be a soul winner. 100, and I kept, I kept reducing the, 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 the reasons. I told my secretary, take this one out, delete this one. There are too many. I have too many reasons. I was, at first, I wanted to be 100, but then at the point, I said, no, you know something. When I was preaching, I said, there, there are more than 100. 
I've tried to reduce it to 100. I can't reduce it anymore. 11 years have gone by. The reasons have become, in case you are thinking that I am now going to reduce the reasons and reduce the soul winning and reduce the soul, it has rather become more. I have more reasons why. Oh. oh. More than double. More reasons why. Why I must be a soul winner. Because as somebody said, if people we can talk about the second coming of Christ when people have not heard of the first coming. That's one of the reasons why. If they have not heard about the first coming, what am I talking about the second coming? When the very first coming that he came, they haven't heard about it. How can I be quiet? How can I stay to myself? When they've not heard about the first coming, I'm talking about the second coming. When the half of the world has not heard about the second coming. Why should I be quiet? When since I started preaching, 36,000 people have died in the last one hour and gone to hell. Why should I be quiet? Why? No, no, no. If you think it's not orderly, I like to be like Jesus. If you think it's not refined, that's what I have to offer. Christ Jesus. And him crucified on the cross. So the devil hates to meet people who don't buy into these three lies. Number one, you can't live without this. Number two, show us a sign, brother. Don't tell the devil, show us a sign. What's the sign of you? What's the sign of your calling? Hey. What's the sign of your calling? What's the sign of God's presence with you? I've heard it through the years. And number three, just give, go this way. You have all this. Just don't serve this. You can serve this. When these three deceptions don't work, there is no country and no town there's no place you cannot go yeah you become very dangerous because the darkest hole you can go there and that's the place the devil is trying to keep us out of places where the souls are yeah because you don't buy all those flashing lights and all those options that he brings to you may you survive in the presence of liars yes. Jesus said you are of your father the devil and his desires will you do he was a murderer from the beginning and he's the father of lies may you survive in the presence of deceptions and lies may your ministry thrive and go higher may you live without those things that they say you cannot live without may you do well Without those things that he said, you cannot do well without them. In the name of he who overcame the deceptions. And he who overcame the lies. And he who overcame the untruths propagated by the wicked and dark liar. The father of lies. That old serpent that deceived the whole world. In the name of Christ Jesus the Savior. I declare victory and overcoming power over your life and over your ministry. May you prevail. May you succeed. May you win. May you never be deceived. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Wow. Wow. How many know that the less you are deceived, the more powerful you are? Yeah. Yeah. There are many films about that. 
somebody who knows the truth who saw they want to kill him there are all the films are like that somebody who, a witness of a murder is the one who knows the truth he a he must be eliminated that's that's what it is all about somebody who knows the truth must be eliminated is the one who knows the facts <laughs> that's why jesus was hated is that the film called a witness or something or, or or something fugitive or something yeah you know you know that you know that he knows yeah i think there's a film that has snakes on the plane snakes on the plane i think the guy saw the murder and because the guy was on the plane they came and put the snakes the serpent satan in the plane <laughs> so that he would die in the plane <laughs> but god has opened your eyes and you shall survive in jesus name thank you for your blessing O oh lord in jesus name amen take out an offering amen you know something this particular message is a very important message perhaps one of the most important messages that i have ever preached yeah tonight's message i'm telling you it, it is a wild exposure of satan and his presence in your life i tell you and what I, what i'm saying is it is something that the fact that the devil had no respect for jesus and to bring these things to jesus you must know that it will come to you just go this way you'll be okay hmm. I thank god for his blessing take out an offering for healing jesus crusade Are you there yeah. all right let's pray oh father thank you for your blessing tonight in jesus name amen take out a booster as well and thank the lord mm. Thank you, Jesus. When the devil wanted Jesus to stay on this earth, Jesus said, I don't need this earth. I can live without being, I can, I, life is not by staying here. I don't need a house. That's why I didn't have a house. You get the point. You have to have a house. I don't need a house. Life is not only lived by having a house. Hey! It's fantastic. Father, thank you. Lift your offering, lift your booster for this offering, this booster in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, receive it. Mm. Mande sempre gele mo shandala ba mandala ba bandala ba bandala. Pelara mandala ba bandala ba shandala ba kabala ndara la ba bandala ba. Le bande le bande la bande le beke balande le beke bande la ba shanda la ma kabara na la ma manda la babara. Day blood the same blood, day blood the same blood, day blood the same blood, day blood the same blood. La manda le me le shinda le beke manda alere. Rainbow del bal derel bar le bal del zamble de shime kanda la ba kambara la manande le. Monde le de ke mende le 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 be kende le 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 mende kende le 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 mende le le mende. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. How many lies has he told you? You can't live without this particular thing. You can never do well without this particular thing. You will die without it. My God, what a liar. What a liar. And that thing is as insignificant as bread. Hey! <laughs> But you, you can live without it. I prophesy, I say you can live without it. You can live without it. You can make it without it. You can do well without it. 
You can. I said you can. You can. Ha. I Jesus survived without that bread. And you will too. One pastor's wife, she said to her husband, you are tall. When will you have peace? You see, the enemy wants you to think that you cannot live without peace. But you can live without peace. Yeah, you can. So the devil wants to say that you cannot live, you cannot live with this situation where you suffer from this. But God wants you to have the revelation. You can, you can live. You can live with, with, with this particular thing. Or without this particular thing. You can. And it's when you, when you get the conviction that I, unless I have happiness, oh, you can be sad. You can live in this life without happiness. So I have to have experience happiness to live. Man shall not live by happiness alone. How many moments of our life are we laughing? Since I woke up this morning, have I laughed? I'm not sure whether I've laughed this morning. Man shall not live by laughter only. I'm still living. I need to have a husband who opened the door for me. Look, woman can live without a husband who opens the door, opens the door and closes the door. You can just open it yourself. Just open it yourself and sit down quickly. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying? Open the door quickly and sit down and stop talking too much. You can live without it. Say, ah, I need a husband who's going to say, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. Sweetheart. Who calls you sweetheart? He calls you Lucy. He calls you Araba. He calls you Araba Lucy. He doesn't call you sweetheart. I was working with my brother the other day. He was just calling his wife, sweetheart, 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 sweetheart. I mean, he said, unless I have a sweetheart who calls me sweetheart, I can't live in, you are lying, you can't live in this world without being called sweetheart. One brother said to me, look, I've got a beloved, but there's one problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, she's too dark, she's too black. I don't know if I can live with it. I said, what are you talking about? You can live without the fair colored beloved. Man shall live, not by fair colored alone. cannot cook green soup for you she cannot do this for you she's not like my former girlfriend who was as versatile as a green frog and what do you want again you can live without all those things <laughs> Satan has deceived you so much. You cannot be happy with this. You cannot be happy without this. I want a husband who will come home at five o'clock. And when he opens the door, he will shout, Darling, Margaret, Margaret, Margaret. <laughs> you can live without it. A lot of people don't have it, and they are okay. Why? 
Jesus. Pastor, I need my fresh milk. My fresh orange juice. My cornflakes. My rice krispies. Otherwise, I cannot live. Who told you that you cannot live? How do you know you cannot live? Ah, who told you that you cannot live? I am here to tell you that you can live. My children were, it was time for my children to go to school. I said, let me take my child to the school that I went to. Christ the King International School. So they also have a good education like I had. When I went there, they said, we cannot accept you. You are, you are charismatic, whatever. This and that. And they threw my thing away. An old boy of the school. Because of my church. But I can live without Christ the King. I said, I can live without Christ the King International School. My life, no man shall not live by Christ the King International School alone. Ah. Hey! Sami has deserted you. He says, Sami has deserted you. He has thrown you away. And he has gone for another girl. And you want to kill yourself. Why? Man shall not live by Sami alone. I said, man shall not live by Sami alone. You don't need Sami to do well in this life. And your heart is only for Sami. Meanwhile, Sami is a fool. Though. Meanwhile, Sami is a fool, but he is the one that you want. You cannot know how to be free from him. God wants to cure you of all those things. And show you that this life can be lived without that Sami guy. I said this life can be lived without that Sami guy. is bad oh. but tonight he has he, we have removed the cloth from off his face they say hey 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 you have been identified you are a liar I can live without it when I came into the ministry I said to myself, I will never travel again mm. out of Ghana. Yeah. If one day God will bless me, maybe there will be a school that will give a scholarship and I will fly there for maybe a course. Maybe one day I may get a, 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 a travel abroad. But I tuned my mind that I, I don't need to travel outside Ghana again in my life. Uh, that's it. And then I tuned myself that I will never have a house. Yeah. Because that mind had to come into me that you never have a house in this life. You see, and, as, and that I don't need a house to live. As, as soon as those things are out, you are so free and able to serve God. Yeah. I tell you, 
You don't need it to survive. You can make it, Oko. You can make it. You can make it. One Christians were discussing one time. <laughs> and uh, are you listening? Yes. They were discussing. This is an overcomer service, so <laughs> and uh, they were discussing. One brother was discussing the wives and others were discussing that if your wife or if your this person's if you were to die, who should your husband marry? And then one of the wives spoke up. She said, Oh, as for my husband, he only needs to marry somebody with a big bottom. <laughs> said, oh, this is the only thing that he needs in this life. He must marry somebody with a big botox. He said, ah, man shall not live by this big botox alone. It is not the only thing that you need. If you don't have it, you can live. What about if you go and marry a Chinese or a Korean? <laughs> hey! Look, you will be surprised how many people are in bondage. Because of something that they feel that this thing is what I need. I need an airway. Yeah. I, I need an Ashanti. I need a car. I need shorts. I need white. But you can live. Without all those things. When I went to Zimbabwe, I saw that they have a lot of meat in their food. But when you come to Ghana, there is not so much meat. But we are living. It's not only meat that we eat. Is it not true? When I went to Zimbabwe, I said, ah. When I went to Argentina, I said, what do you have? They said, here we have meat. When they eat just meat, big. When you come to Ghana, so the meat will be small like this. But are we not living? Are we not surviving? Are we not going for World Cup? Are we not going for Can 2008? We are beating people who eat meat. Zimbabwe, did they even come and play with us? With all their meat, they couldn't play. Let God free you. Amen. Amen. I know some people, they say, I cannot, I can, the only car I can drive is Benz. How can you live? You can live without Benz. <laughs> we are living without Benz. And we are doing well. As soon as you are free from a particular thing, 
that you say you must have. You are free. There is a freedom to go anywhere, to do anything, to please God himself because you don't need that particular thing anymore. Lift up your hands. Father, we are thanking you that there is nothing that we need in this world. Whatever you have chosen for us, we are thanking you. And whatever you, have, you feel that you should not give to us, we are thanking you. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen. When you read Rick Joyner's book, um, When God Walked the Earth, you see in there the temptation of Jesus. How the devil told him that he needed the bread. And he said to the devil, If my father has chosen not to give me this bread now, I accept it. I accept it. It must be his wisdom that he has chosen that this bread, I should not have it. I accept it. And I accept it now. Listen. Whatever God has chosen to give you and whatever he has chosen not to give you, accept it. And say, I thank you, my God. I thank you for what you have given to me. And I still love my God. And immediately the devil will lose his power over your life. And God will bless you. Father, let your children be happy with what you have given. We thank you that from today, we know that there is nothing in particular that makes our life work except you and we are thankful we are grateful oh lord we know there are many things we don't have we wish we had them but tonight we declare our freedom from the lasting and the longing for things that are not ours we are grateful and we are blessed and we shall serve you till we die we shall love you till we die. And we shall follow you till we die. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Many Christians struggle with questions like, How do I know if this is the will of God? What is God saying about this person I'm about to marry? Should I enter full-time ministry or not? As a Christian, you must develop and perfect the art of being led by God. This bestseller by Dag Hewitt Mills will make you a master at following God's voice. Yes, God does speak to us always, but many do not hear His voice. This book, The Art of Hearing, is loaded with easy steps to develop any Christian. Deliver yourself from premature death. Avoid losing your gift and learn to follow the voice of God to the top. The book, The Art of Hearing, is now available everywhere books are sold. Your days of struggling as a pastor are over. In this timely book, Bishop Dag Heward Mills, a pastor himself, explains why and how it is possible to make the pastoral ministry effective. Apply the easy principles taught in this bestseller, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry, so you can also become a good pastor. Your days of struggling as a pastor are truly over. This book, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry, highlights four easy keys to effective pastoring. It is highly recommended among pastors and church workers all over the world. Read Transform Your Pastoral Ministry today. It is full of practical suggestions on how you can be a first-class pastor. Simple yet so powerful the nuts and bolts of pastoring a church successfully are clearly spelt out in this bestseller. 
This book, Transform Your Pastoral Ministry, is available everywhere books are sold. Your days of struggling to pastor a church are over.